Hey friends and family, it's Sunny. I wanted to make this video diary to document the whole trip for myself, but many of you asked about how it went and to see pictures, so I thought sharing this might be the easiest way. I did want to document the whole thing, so I did start with the who, what, where, when, why, and hows of the trip, and then jumped into the adventure. And what an adventure it was. Mountains and lakes, wildlife, flowers, geysers, and miles, so many miles, hiking miles, driving miles, miles upon miles. But I do have a couple thank yous that I need to add. Thank you to my husband, Steve, who was initially a little nervous about this whole trip, but got supportive. And financially, especially, since we all know that when you start a new hobby, there's some upfront costs. To my mom and dad, who gifted me my first hiking poles that were very necessary, and this tripod so that I could be in some of my hiking videos in my own pictures. And then finally, to my brother Jesse and my sister-in-law Ellen. Jesse, because he is the only person that when I told about wanting to go on this solo hiking trip, didn't say, why would you do that? His initial response was, that sounds awesome. And my sister-in-law Ellen, who has been my health and wellness partner for about two years now, and who also has the best sense of humor for somebody who got accidentally invited and then uninvited when I decided to tackle this adventure solo. So that's it. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. When I mentioned this trip, many people who know me reacted with, why? Why hiking and why alone? I realized for those tough days with blisters or hunger or facing my fears of heights and bears, it would be good to document my why. So why hiking? About six years ago, I was working in a high stress 24 seven job. In fact, in 13 years, only five days in total did I not receive a call, text or email after hours that needed me. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was kind of addicted to that adrenaline rush. Then my sister-in-law, Ellen, invited me to go to her uncle's remote cabin in the Black Hills. I did, but I didn't really enjoy the experience. I didn't know how to unplug and be still. I was anxious and a little bored. A few years later, I left that job and now work in a role that is significantly less stressful and less hours. Everything is slower and more balanced. So when Ellen planned another trip back to the cabin, I got myself invited for a second try. It was as if I was a different person. Ellen and I had been working on getting healthy, and I was on a long streak of working out 30 minutes a day. I didn't want my goals to be disruptive to anyone else's plans, so I decided to get up really early and go for a walk before anyone else was up. I didn't even call it a hike at the time. I just headed around a pond, climbed a big hill, and walked in the woods, and I loved it. I took so many pictures, recorded a brook, got a great workout, and when I got back from the Black Hills, I looked up every trail within a 60-mile radius of Sioux Falls and started to become a hiker. So why go alone? One of my personal flaws that I'm working on is this need to make other people happy. I literally 
can't enjoy activities if the person that I'm with isn't enjoying it too. I squirm at movies that I know so Steve doesn't like. I listen to my musical soundtracks when I'm alone. It's not other people's fault. I'm just a really intuitive person and I can't handle when other people are discomfort at my expense. The idea that when hiking, someone might be tired or want a break when I don't, or be bored or not sleeping well, gives me anxiety. And I would never be able to enjoy my own adventure. Having no one to consider except my own wants and needs gives me that ability to decompress. And one other factor. When I was just starting to hike, I went to a new location and didn't grab a map because it was just a park. And I promptly got turned around and felt lost. I do have a terrible sense of direction and no instincts in that area. I had to stop, take a few deep breaths, look around, make a plan, and get myself back to the trailhead. When I saw the parking lot in the distance for the first time, I can't explain how proud I was. It was like I had survived an avalanche when all I did was get myself home. But I felt so strong and empowered, like I could tackle even more. And I wanted that feeling again. So I keep pushing myself longer distances, more rugged landscapes, less marked paths. And now, this trip. And there's one more little why. My junior year of high school, I read and fell in love with Walden by Henry David Thoreau. Lots of people quote why I went to the woods. But here's my favorite line. I want to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life.
out bright and early. 7.15 on the Rough Lock Trail. Let's see some waterfalls.
hej, hej. In Yellowstone. Bear spray. Green gold keys to make noise. Safe and sound.
driving you guys across just 